Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see all of you. And finally, we have Vanita Ji from VL Astrology. And today, she will be sharing beautiful insights on the current transit of Venus, which is going to happen in Libra. And she will also give the dates, the retrogression, and the direct motions. And she will also speak on Venus. And now, we will also do it for all the ascendants. How is it going to affect us? So, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and please tell us what you want to share. Hi, Babaji. Thank you so much for having me over. First of all, I am really, really honored and I am really happy to be here. Thank you so much. So, to start with, uh, I would just um, uh, say just one thing that, uh, you know, uh, I take Venus short form as V-E-N. So V-E-N, if you see from far, it is Y-E-S. Yes. So what, whatever the cosmic energy is coming to say yes. So please, first of all, I would like to share that please do not, do not say anything negative because it will be like Tathastu. So just, just be positive, attract positive, stay positive, speak positive, think positive. So everything goes perfect. So I will be taking up, uh, you know, in this video, I will be taking up, uh, I will be explaining what is Venus, how come he was named Shuk. Uh, then I will be explaining a little bit about uh, the sign of Libra, then Venus in Libra and the general impact of the same. Then I'll be giving the dates of uh, Venus uh, entering Libra and getting retrograde and progressive again. Uh, then I will be telling you which all planets will be joining Venus through uh, his long stay of four months in Libra and when. Yeah. Uh, that is the guest appearance of the planets, I would say. <laughs> okay. then, then a bit about what Venus retrogression means. Uh, I will be touching this uh, in a very uh, short, uh, you know, duration. Um, and then lastly, I will be taking up the impact of the transit on each ascendant or and the moon sign. Yes, and uh, yeah. I will post the link to uh, to your channel in the description. So whoever has not subscribed, then they can please go and subscribe. Oh. <laughs> There's amazing content on transits, which I had seen and I was very impressed. So I thought we must, we must do a session together. So wow. stage is all yours. <laughs> and the first part, uh, I will upload it on the details of Venus as you gave. And mm -hmm. the second part of the video, I, which I'll upload next week, will be on each and every ascendant. All right. So watch this video yeah. this week. And then next Friday, you will get it for each and every ascendant. So please start. Okay. So Venus. What is Venus? Let's know a little bit. Uh, I'll be touching the mythological as well as the astrological meaning. <laughs> uh, we all know Sage Bhrigu had a son who was himself a renowned sage. His name was Ushana. Sage Ushan is Shukracharya, perceptor of demons. Shukra is the only one who was considered worthy of being granted the knowledge of Mrit Sanjeevani Vidya by Lord Shiv. Yes. This uh, knowledge would permit him to bring the dead to life. He was the only one who could do that. Lord Shiva was so pleased with his devotee that he gave him the Vardhan, as we say, the boon, which also means conferred on him many distinctions. Those distinctions are, uh, he will be the foremost uh, amongst the planets. His luster and shine would surpass even the luster and shine of the sun and the fire. Then when Venus has risen in the skies, only then, the auspicious tasks like marriages and religious undertakings be done. That is also given by Lord Shiv to Venus. And anyone who prays Venus will become virile and begets lots of children. That's the main thing. Now Venus was told that in course of time, he would enter the body of Lord Shiv and be released in Shukra, that is semen and would be looked after like a son. That was his commitment, uh, Lord Shiv's sure. commitment to Shukra. Now I will tell you in brief uh, the mythological tale behind this, uh, behind Shukra, you know, we know that, you know, all those, at, uh, you know, those period, there were devas and asuras, the demons and the gods, 
they were always you know having periodical wars and you know uh, somebody used to uh, complain uh, to the devas and they used to come in between and the the gods all that used to happen that time a lot now at that time there was one uh, demon andhak uh, andhak the asur king was invincible now he requested he was like firm no i want to win so he requested shukracharya to use the mrit uh, sanjeevani vidya and bring the dead asuras to life and um, shukracharya was very fond of him so he granted him okay fine i'll do that so now things were going out of control so gods got uh, you know they get very disturbed easily you know lord indra you know he does that he keeps it running here and there that's what i've seen in the and read in the uh, you know books now uh, lord shiva when heard this he was like obviously he felt that he is responsible for this so he must do something about it so he uh, because he had given the vardan to shukracharya for this now he sent uh, nandi the celestial bull to go and get shukra and when nandi brought shukracharya to shiv shiv swallowed him alive so that the oh. slain asuras oh. would remain dead now shukracharya is inside his abdomen he did not give up he did what he started to offer prayers he prayed hard you know to uh, forgiveness and for uh, you know life so lord shiv uh, listened to him and agreed to release him hmm. so he was released in a torrent of semen by lord shiv and was granted a boon of immortality by lord shiv but at the same time uh, cons- his consort gauri parvati ji she said that he will not use this mrit sanjeevani vidya so that was how you know otherwise the asuras would have been uh, immortal now and uh, we would have been slain i think so you can imagine that's the reason why venus is a great benefic venus unlike uh, jupiter is a tamasic planet because uh, jupiter is a rajasic planet uh, planet and he's a uh, guru and he uh, he's also guru and venus is also guru he's also acharya venus is also acharya but venus represents wife or female counterparts in a male's chart he is sophisticated dignified luxury loving an artistic planet of impeccable manners and excellent taste he is wise he is knowledgeable and is a wordsmith of very rare and high order i can talk and talk and talk about uh, venus he's 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 he represents passion to seek for pleasure that's why i'm so fond of venus mm-hmm. now what is libra let's see what libra is i will tell in short everything so that you know you can i can cover everything for you people for the audience libra is the sign symbolized by uh, the scales of justice Libra epitomizes balance and fairness. This sign's influence helps restore equilibrium to all affairs, no matter how big or small. The essence of Libra energy is charming, lovable, fair, sincere, sharing, beautiful, and hopelessly romantic. There are definitely negative expressions as well attached to Libra sign. I would say uh, they are uh, that you know their energy. can be vain indecisive and melodramatic they are manipulative and spoiled at times and delusional now this uh, coming to this transit of venus in libra now you know venus in libra that's its own sign but this is a moon trigona sign also of uh, venus venus feels at home and strong especially between the degrees uh, 0 to 15 Yeah. this will make yeah. one feel that if you have been too preoccupied with work or you are stressed with a lot of travels and activities then let's take a step back and look at ways in which one can find inner peace time to slow down enough to appreciate the little things in life i think you can have a cup of coffee relax or maybe you know a glorious sunset a walk in nature sitting by a lake maybe if you are in that country where there are many lakes 
I just visited, so I'm talking about the lakes. Nice. You'll probably feel like doing something cultural or artistic, like going to an exhibition, attending a concert, going to a movie, eating out at a luxury restaurant. So make sure you devote some time uh, to savoring and enjoying the pleasures of life that has to be offered by life. And not only that, you know, uh, Venus in Libra influences the personal life as well. Also, this transit could trigger a desire to bring more beauty into your house, in your own appearance. Look around you. You can arrange your furniture again, or maybe, you know, uh, you could uh, add some um, colorful and tasteful accessories to brighten up your surroundings. The same could apply to your personal style. Is it time to get some new clothes? I think yes. Um, I would definitely some different jewelry I'm very fond of so during this transit Venus in Libra this is a wonderful time for bringing uh, peace in a difficult situation because Libra is a sign of peace if feathers have been ruffled either in business or personally during this transit you can bring accord into your relationships now I'm moving on to the dates Venus enters Libra on the 2nd of September 2018 till the 2nd of January 2019. So it's a four months period. And uh, in between it gets retrograde on the 6th of October 2018 at 16 degrees Libra. And then it becomes progressive on the November 16th, 2018 at one degree Libra. The total days come out to be 42. And again, it reaches 16 degrees Libra on the 17th of December. Oh. It will take that much time, which is called the shadow period of Venus because it has just traveled through and now it is going uh, through the path where it was retrograde and now it is going towards that path again. So it will be transiting, uh, uh, you know, that those shadow period. And uh, Venus will be going through three nakshatras, that is of Mars, Rahu, and Jupiter. That is the second half of uh, Chitra and uh, entire Swati and two-third of Vishakha. Now coming to the guest planets who will be visiting Venus's own house of Libra. As we all know, Jupiter is there already and it will be uh, with Venus till the 11th of October. And meanwhile, Mercury too will be joining uh, for a short period uh, from 6th October till the 26th October. Sun comes into the debilitation sign of Libra from the 17th of October to the 16th of November. And as we know, Mars and uh, Venus remain in the angular, the Kendras to each other, forming a Panch Mahapurush Yoga for the movable Rashis. So till the 6th of November, Mars is obviously uh, there and then it moves into the sign of Aquarius. I hope that is uh, something that you can uh, note down because these are very important periods. Now coming to uh, Venus, which is going retrograde. Uh, now Venus goes retrograde every 18 months and this is the phase um, to reassess and rediscover our values. Values why? Because it's a second house rulership. When Venus goes retrograde, it's the time of moving backward, perhaps of going back to pick up pieces lost in the past. That happens with the, all the retrogression phases, you know. We all have to look back. It is a retrieval, a turning inward, perhaps a letting go period. Since Venus's domain is relationships, that is seventh house lordship, second and seventh lordship. So this turning inward uh, happens in the domain of the relationship. Venus being the planet that rules love, harmony and compassion, this period is going to be a very precarious period for those who don't have a um, good dignity Venus in the natal. Now, because of this Venus retrogression, uh, uh, will, uh, uh, you know, relationships will be impacted. Venus is uh, money also. So money area will also get impacted. Love areas are reviewed. Old relationships could be brought up uh, or begin again. Or uh, they could be completed, maybe, you know, start afresh. 
um, means the romantic ones i would say uh, then uh, money and finances could need uh, you know need over uh, and social events and parties may not be straightforward as planned you have to review those so when venus retrogrades you can remodel redefine and rework your choices this is a great time for reflection and a mood and a mood or inspiration board will reaffirm and realign your unique personal tastes because venus is taste taste buds food uh, luxury items vehicles so all that is covered in this retrogradation period so now coming to the um, uh, transits the final segment so i would like to share first of all you know before moving further that what is what is actually transit you know what what, the, what does transit mean we keep talking about transits you know so what is transit transit is actually a celestial delivery boy the planetary positions in the natal chart indicate the starry configuration at the time of birth but the planets keep moving in the sky and when a planet moves from one particular sign or constellation to the other one that is called the transit of that planet so this phenomena changes the effect of on everyone it will not be the same though we take the general uh, you know interpretation of uh, the transits but i actually personally feel to the time your natal and uh, the you know the transits are not connected well or you know you can't just uh, take it in seclusion but yes in general if we are taking so these definitely impact somewhere or the other so if the effect is good we get the desired changes in our lives but if the effect is bad we see the unwanted results as all the planets move at their specific speeds the time of their stay in different signs or constellations are different some move slowly that of saturn and jupiter and some really fast like moon is the fastest moving planet as we all know and on the daily basis if we want the predictions to be done then we take the moon because it stays around approximately 2 to quarter days in a sign thus moon transit is the most important the transits uh, thus can be read in many ways but most commonly what i do is uh, i read through uh, you know the ascendants and moon moon signs the uh, you know ascendant why because it gives the vital clues about the mind appearance personality the way of thinking health and other important spheres of life and moon sign signifies one's emotional makeup instincts behavior temperament interests dislikes and intrinsic qualities so even if your ascendant goes weak nothing to worry your emotional side uh, should be strong it it should be strong enough to handle uh, things which are not okay you know in, in your life to face and conquer anything that's what i have experienced and i always suggest and recommend that we should see from both if you have an ascendant in libra your uh, you should see you should check the libra also you should check uh, where the where the moon is both of them are important i feel what do you think uh, baba ji here yeah so <laughs> i think the audio is coming from there oh now it's fine yeah so generally uh, wh- how i see this is like ascendant is very important of course because that shows the people who are coming into your life and nothing can happen unless somebody tries to impact your life either good or bad okay so if some planet is transiting in the 8th house or 12th house that can happen that somebody is telling you that there's this problem you need to check it so that that's very true but from the moon also you need to check as you said so from moon how do i check it is basically a moon in my opinion is how the society impacts you rather than people calling it that oh moon is the mind not just simply saying because actually what the mind is mind is simply the storehouse of all the desires nothing more than that mm-hmm. the experiences True. of the past na because that's what the scripture say that mind is the storehouse of the experiences of the past and the desires of the future that is why you mm-hmm. have nodes of the moon rahu and ketu it's not nodes of the sun <laughs> so True. 
and how that happens is how the society is impacting us like suppose we have a group of friends who are smoking then we will also be dragged towards that even if you don't want most of the times as it peer pressure yeah yes if if everybody is getting married then we also start feeling oh we need to get married we are lacking behind there's everybody going ahead everybody has a job and you don't have then you also start feeling like it so from the moon how i see it as how the society can impact you sometimes so suppose maybe from the ascendant if a planet is transiting in the 10th house for example you you can have great great name fame recognition these things can come physically but from the moon sign suppose if it is transiting in the 7th house then it can happen that everybody is telling oh why are, what are you doing in career you should be getting married now <laughs> or if it is transiting in 5th then you might feel that oh you know i'm good in career but what about children i don't have children <laughs> <laughs> so the society will impact you like that or at least you you will be impacted you will feel inside that i should focus there and if it is transiting in the eighth from the moon sign then there's some level of fear which is involved oh what will i have even if even if there is a big raise in career you might feel oh what if they fire me tomorrow these things happen sometimes i see that people have, people tell me that oh i have got this job but somehow i am bit <laughs> i am not very confident will i be able to do this or they will keep me so i then i see okay from the 8th house the transiting planets from moon are not very good so that is why you are feeling like this so yes both are important and there's there's a lot of controversy yeah 8th house transit is not considered a uh, good uh, any which ways obviously that's the main uh, you know dustana that is the one of yeah. the main and people have a lot of confusion they will ask in transit videos should we see from moon or from the ascendant well yes that is the question i keep getting that is why yeah, i made sure that i say this this confusion comes why because uh, you think both are the same right but both are not same when you know that both are different one is externally what is happening and the other is how the society is impacting you how and you are feeling inside all right so then this confusion doesn't come then you can see from every planet like generally i also see transits of planets like jupiter and saturn from venus sometimes when people ask that when can we get married so now from the ascendant you have to check the seventh house because that will physically bring this pause if that is only not there what will you do by seeing other right. thing that is important but then you yeah. have to see from the moon are you mentally feeling that i should get married or your mind is somewhere else <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay and then you have to see sure. what the karaka for relationships venus is telling if jupiter and saturn are both aspecting your natal venus in transit then you will get a strong desire to find somebody it can be love marriage or arranged marriage whatever it is so and all the things are matching then you can say and if ultimately if the dasha permits of course then you can say that yes you might get married 99% so you can use transits from not only moon and ascendant i can see sometimes from the 10th lord or from the 10th house and because they have a different flavor you know so we don't have to get confused oh my from Absolutely. my moon it is transiting in 10th and from my ascendant it is in 12th house what will happen when you know the meaning uh, or inside after both these signs then there is no confusion absolutely absolutely well very well said and very well explained that one is external and the other one is the is what the others think about you and the internal internal internalizing you know whatever is going on inside you yeah because no, i know i that uh, yeah. whenever from 6th house from moon these slow planets are transiting saturn rahu ketu and jupiter whatever mm -hmm. is there externally as per ascendant if they if they are transiting fifth house or some so called good houses like 5 9 10 11 these four houses but from the moon if it is transiting sixth always the person will feel there's some problem in life kuch to garbar hai because sixth house from moon always tells you that you know there's mess here there's some problem there so even if you are getting married that time and these planets are in sixth from moon in transit you will feel that oh somehow you know the marriage didn't go as i wanted somehow maybe maybe if this was good then it would be better some something like this and if it's transiting eight then you always have this fear of what will happen ye hoga ye ho jayega wo ho jayega and so some dissatisfaction always yeah sixth house primarily and eighth house for fear this i have seen time and again with transits working so it is very important to check from there yes absolutely absolutely i i missed out uh, uh, the nakshatras actually uh see it will be um, venus will be transiting three nakshatras as i told you uh, one is swat uh, one is uh, 
Chitra, Chitra, then Swati, and then Vishaka. All right. So uh, Swati, um, uh, Chitra is making new friends, enjoyment, pleasures, romance, drama, passion, writing poetry. So you can see how it is well connected with Venus. Then Swati is good time to buy automobiles, vehicles, journey, travel. All that is Swati, the Rahu Nakshatra. So, and uh, obviously it is a movable nakshatra as it is. Chitra is a Mridu nakshatra, the tender one, and uh, Swati is the movable one. And coming to the Mishra, the mixed uh, nakshatra of Vishakha, that is for worshipping ceremonies, purchasing furniture and electronics. So, whenever you have, uh, you know, um, between 0 to 6 degree 40 minutes, then you can just do uh, all the recreational part or pleasures, romance part. So, uh, if you have already in your natal, so these work even more. Uh -huh. This transit, uh -huh. and if it is, if it, if Venus is in this, uh, these nakshatras in these many degrees, like six degree, forty minutes to twenty degrees, will be Swati because four charans are there. All the four charans are there. So you must, uh, you know, at that time plan to buy vehicles or something, you know, if you are planning to or a machinery or something, uh, you're putting up a factory or industry, that is the time you should plan, I would say. Then if you are planning for uh, going on a pilgrimage or you're planning to, uh, you know, some religious ceremony at home or something like that, because Vishakha Nakshatra is a very pious Nakshatra. So that is the time when 20 degrees to 30 degrees is the when Venus reaches. That's the time you can plan all this. That is why I wanted to give you these uh, uh, degrees also. So uh, so that, you know, uh, whosoever is interested to do certain things. So these are the periods uh, conducive for all these things. So um, that's what. So moving further, uh, uh, we have uh, made, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, everything clear till now. So moving on to the ascendant and or the moon signs. So how the Venus transit is going to be and how is it uh, going to impact these uh, ascendants. So let's see. So, so to start with, I uh, will be taking up 